The title of my message tonight is From the Dust of the Earth. For thousands of years, there has been two worldviews. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1 is an incredible piece of scientific knowledge. It says that prior to the existence of time and space and matter, there was a creator, a transcendent creator who, through his incredible power and knowledge, created the heavens and the earth, space, time, and matter. The other view is expressed by Carl Sagan in his book Cosmos, says the cosmos is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. So you have the view that a transcendent, supernatural creator who existed before the universe created the earth, the universe, and its life forms. The atheistic or the materialistic worldview is that the universe is all there is. There is nothing outside the dimensions of space and time, and that everything that exists is a result of natural forces within the space-time domain, as a result of billions of years of accidental circumstances, the galaxies, the Earth, and its life forms arose without any interference of an extra-dimensional supernatural being. In Genesis 2.7, it says this, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So there's two views on how man and the life forms on planet Earth got here. The first view, which I call the intelligent design uh, formula, says that matter, combined with energy, combined with information, concepts, know-how, blueprints, biochemical expertise, is what was necessary to produce living systems. And that, of course, is the creation worldview. The evolutionary formula for life basically says that matter plus energy plus chance chemistry, what some would call chance stochastic chemical processes, acting over billions of years of time, produced all of the life forms that we see on planet Earth. So those are the two worldviews. When we talk about living systems, living beings, we need to define a little bit some of the basic characteristics of living systems. What is the difference between, you know, this pulpit and the person standing behind the pulpit? And there's some, actually some quite basic differences that we can look at that define living systems. First of all, living systems are able to process energy. They're able to take nutrients from the environment utilize the energy from those nutrients to perform useful work. That's one of the defining characteristics of living systems. Secondly, living systems must have the ability to store information within their cellular structure. Information that is necessary for the uh, metabolism and the reproduction of the organism so that they can make copies of themselves and pass that information on to the uh, next generation. So storage and also retrieval of that information is necessary if you're going to make copies of yourself. So that's the second thing. And another thing that is quite unique to living systems is self-reproduction. No machine ever made by man has ever been made, able to make copies of itself. They'll never find two cars in the parking lot snuggled up next to each other overnight the next day producing little baby cars. It just doesn't happen. So living systems are capable of storing, uh, processing energy, using nutrient energy from the environment to help them stay alive, metabolize, reproduce themselves. They're able to store information within their cellular structure. The information is used to make copies of themselves. The information is used for metabolism. It's used for uh, repair of uh, injured structures. And, of course, they're able to self-reproduce. These are three characteristics which define living systems and separate them from inanimate, non-living uh, structures. And when we talk about the origin of life, we're really talking about two different aspects, two different problems in the origin of life. Living systems are comprised of two main components. They're comprised of hardware, chemical hardware, and they're comprised of software.
software. The hardware in living systems is made up of a number of very complex chemicals. Proteins is the most abundant chemical that is found in living systems. Proteins are strands of amino acids bonded end to end. And proteins function to provide the structures in your body, bones, teeth, hair, skin. They're also involved in metabolism. Enzymes which accomplish the chemical reactions in living systems are proteins. And they make up the majority of the, what I call the chemical hardware in living systems. The second structure is DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is a very complex molecule we'll look at in a moment that is the molecule that all living systems on Earth use to store the information necessary to produce all life forms on planet Earth. It's a very complex molecule. And that is critical to explain the origin of DNA and proteins if we're going to explain the origin of life using any uh, method, whether it's evolution or...